I don't necessarily want you to succeed. And the bigger your dream, the more people that are going to come out of the woodwork to try to stop you. As Oliver Emberton said, the only way to avoid pissing people off is to do nothing important. But if you're striving for something important, if you're trying to make real change, if there's something in your life that you're absolutely hell-bent to make happen, you've got to understand that you're going to be fighting against something. People are going to be pushing back against you, and it's going to be your ability to hold true to that vision that's going to determine whether you can pull it off. And as Victor Hugo said, you have enemies? Well, good. It means you stood up for something at some point in your life. And that's what people miss. They somehow want to get through this unscathed. They somehow hope that with this grand change that they want to make, that people just fall in love. That they see your vision. That they fall in line behind you and that they want you to lead them. That's not the way that people work. Having a vision already puts you in an incredibly rare group of people. Being able to see something that other people can't see, that is the role of a visionary. It's literally to interpret the world that other people don't even know exists and bring it into fruition and get people excited about it, get them to fall in line. But understand, when you build an army, you will have an opposing force. But as Mark Twain said, Keep away from those who try to deliver your ambitions. Small people always do that. But the really great ones, they make you believe that you too can become great. And that's the kind of person that you want to surround yourself with. You want to surround yourself with people that believe in you. You want to surround yourself with people that even when they can't see it, they can see you. Even when they don't understand what you're trying to do, they believe in you. And they're willing to get in line. And they're willing to meet that opposing force. And you That's when you can make change. But you can't be afraid to piss people off. You have to know that they're coming for you, and you have to be willing to fight. Because if you're not willing to fight, you might as well sit down now. So if you're going to be one of the few that stands up, you've got to stand up prepared for war. of their brain capacity. High achievers, high achievers use 20% of their brain capacity. Let's imagine for a few moments what our life would be like if we could access, let's say, 20% of our brain's capacity. 100 billion neurons per human of which only 15% are activated. There are more connections in the human body than there are stars in the galaxy. We possess a gigantic network of information. Your brain has billions and billions of neurons, hundreds of billions of interconnections. It can process more than 2 million bits of information in one second. It doesn't forget anything you've ever seen which is why it's important to make sure you don't put the wrong things in there because they always will impact upon you subconsciously and consciously. The first thing is that everybody, and this is everybody has the potential to do this, the human brain is far more powerful than the computer. What is your brain capable of if you actually put your mind to something? Just about anything? It's a five hundred years for someone to know this. Someone hidden on the inside felt and noticed the shape of the human brain. Message being that divine gift does not come true. A higher power. From our own mind. You would be amazed at what the average brain now, some people say, well, you know, I'm not good at languages, I'm not good at math, you know, I'm not good at science. You know what? That's a bunch of hogwash. That's not true. If you have an average brain, you're good at anything. 
it's just a matter of programming the brain correctly. Yeah, you know, most people think it's pretty easy to read. Why? Because they know all 26 letters of the alphabet. What if you only knew 21 letters of the alphabet? What could you read? Not very much. Well, math and science are exactly the same way. If you're missing elements, it all becomes very confusing. But if you go back and you fill them in, it becomes very easy. And just about everything is easy if you're willing to put the work into it. Everybody can remember things that they want to remember and things that they don't want to remember, they can't remember. Have you noticed that? And anybody can always find time for something that they want to do. But if they don't want to do it, they can find 5,000 reasons why they shouldn't do it. And that's what it is when it comes to preparing yourself, particularly in an area like medicine, technological areas. You just have to be willing to do it. Not going to come automatically. It doesn't come by osmosis. You have to actually work for it to make it work. The average human being uses 5% of their brain capacity. High achievers, high achievers use 20% of their brain capacity. Olympic gold medalists use 40% of their brain capacity. Because mastery is the highest form of intelligence. So imagine this. Imagine you winning the silver medal or the bronze medal. Those people who win those medals are using 20% of their brain capacity. That's a lot. Their access is a lot. But the person standing on top of the podium, on top of the box, with the gold medal around their neck, is using 20% more than they're using of their brain capacity. A new type of thinking is essential if mankind is to survive and move towards higher levels. I'm going to say this is what it's going to be given. And it couldn't be more relevant than it is today. There's a theory that there's a little vein in everyone. There's a way of unlocking that part of the brain that we could all, to some extent, at least have an experience. Second step is a very simple one. It's you decide that you're going to make your brain your hobby. Now, as soon as you do that, your brain is like a, like a young child. And so if you suddenly focus on a young child, what happens? It flourishes. Same with the brain. So when you make it your hobby, when you scan the web, when you go to the libraries, when you attend courses, when you read books on it, your brain will reward you in ways which even you now believe with yourself. When you tell your brain all the reticular activating system, the show they call it the RAS, that part of your brain determines what you notice in the world. And it's really important because when you set a goal, when you get really clear on a vision, there's so many reasons, and you review it enough, it becomes a part of you. That part of your brain says, anything that relates to this, I need to notice. Our perception of reality has less to do with what's happening out there, and more to do with what's happening in here. If you're going to change an area, you do three things. Number one, you focus on it, and you get clear and compelling vision for what you want. See, if you focus on crashing into the pole, trying not to, the more you try not to, what you focus on, that's where the energy goes, that's where you go. If the only reason you're focusing on it is like, well, I, I need to lose some weight because I feel fat, versus I want the energy of burn because that will have more passion, more life, because I'll be able to impact my children. Get focused and clear. What's compelling? Where are you? Really? Don't lie. Where do you want to be? And make it so compelling you can't help it. When you wake up in the morning, you want to transform this area of life. You know, we have to say anything. Can break you or make you? The great genius is just something different. The daydream state, the kind of state that Thomas Edison, for example, the daydream wants to eat back the lifestyle. The daydream is to light 
weeks we were tied up at night. That could be dangerous. So little human beings that are wasting time daydreaming and the ingenious daydreaming, the brilliant daydreaming, which everyone can do. They say, wouldn't it be great to look at the planet at night? How are we going to do that? And when they start to work, they bring in other people, they make that dream come true. You can't just focus on it. you got to create a clear and compelling future in that area that will pull you towards it so you're not trying to push yourself. Have the attitude that you can. Believe that your brain can. And then they do whatever you want to come true. And then you can make it come true. That's the truth. Now I want to do it. Align your life with what you really value. I want your life with what is most important to you. And then once you are in a position to align, guess what you'll do? Take action. You need to work at it. When everything's in alignment, there's nothing pulling you away, boom, you go for it. Every day is another opportunity to change your life. So if you're worried, and you're thinking you may not make it, then you won't make it. But if you make up your mind you're going to make it, and as I think I said, the only way is if you quit. Just make up your mind you won't quit. Brilliance is a potential for everybody. You're still here. You get another chance. This day. That's why it's become a career for me because I love it. I love what I do. So I don't think it can happen. 